In this video, we'll demonstrate how to replace the MOSFET in an Elenos ETG transmitter. The first step is to unsolder and remove the bypass capacitor and the metal bar over the MOSFET. The next step is to remove the small fins on the top of the MOSFET and the mica capacitors. There's also a small piece of Kapton which can be removed and reused. Now we will carefully heat the two drains and remove the MOSFET. Next, we clean the spot where the MOSFET was using a combination of techniques of uh, solder sucker and alcohol to clean it of all the excess solder as well as any residual thermal compound. The next step is to apply a thin layer of thermal compound to the back of the MOSFET, making sure it's clean of all dust, and then a very, very thin layer of the thermal compound. Also make sure to observe all the safety considerations for the particular thermal compound that you're using. Now it's time to place the new MOSFET. You don't want to touch the lead, so it's best to use a tweezers to place the, uh, the MOSFET in, in, uh, in the position making sure that you've got the, the polarity right so that the gates are in the right spot and the drains are in the right spot. Squish it back and forth a little bit to make sure there's no air gap. Now we clean the small fins that were on top of the fats and replace them on the fats. Now we replace the bar above the transistor alternating the pressure a couple of turns on the left and a couple of turns on the right. Don't over tighten. Now we can lightly solder the gates into place. We've reset our soldering iron to 650 degrees Fahrenheit. We resolder the 200 ohm resistor and then we put into place the small mica capacitors and resolder those. We tack solder the mica capacitors first to assure they're in the proper position. Now the Kapton insulator is reinstalled. Now the two fins of the mica capacitors are resoldered. Now we go back and resolder, adding more solder to the whole assembly now that it's all stabilized, 
and while each component is cooling, we hold it in place to assure that there's no cold solder joints. Now we retin and reinstall the two fins that go on top of the MOSFET. When soldering the flange, it's important to use very little heat so we don't damage the MOSFET or lift it off from its soldering. At this point, it's a good idea to check the mechanical rigidity of the assembly. Make sure everything's nice and solid. Now we check for shorts with a multimeter. Make sure there's no shorts between the ground and drain. Now on the gate side, we connect the bias circuit and then use the multimeter to verify that the DC resistance between the gate and ground is in the range of 7 to 10 kilo ohms. If the measured resistance is much different than that value, then there's something wrong, probably a short. Now we can reinstall the bypass capacitor that we took out earlier. Now we reinstall the connections on both the input and the output side of the bypass capacitor. We'll solder the bypass capacitor with a relatively low temperature to keep from uh, drips occurring that might short the transistors beneath. When soldering to the bypass capacitor, make sure you have a good mechanical connection before you solder it. So just in case something gets hot in there and solder flows, it doesn't break the contact. And that's it. That's how to replace a FET in an ETG series transmitter.